Hello everyone! In today's video, we're going to dive into an important data structure, the AVL tree. It's a classic self-balancing binary search tree widely used in scenarios that require efficient searching and dynamic data maintenance. You might be wondering, what do the letters AVL stand for? Well, they are the initials of the two inventors, Adelson Velsky and Landis, who introduced this tree structure in 1962. That's why we call it the AVL tree. First, let's address an important question. Why do we need AVL trees? In a standard binary search tree, BST, the structure of the tree depends entirely on the order in which nodes are inserted. If nodes are added in strictly ascending or descending order, the tree can degrade into a linear structure, essentially becoming a linked list. This degradation causes the time complexity of operations like searching, inserting, and deleting to drop from the ideal O log N to O N. To solve this problem, the AVL tree was introduced. By enforcing strict balancing rules, an AVL tree ensures that, regardless of the order of node insertions or deletions, the tree's height remains balanced within a reasonable range. This balance guarantees consistently efficient performance for all key operations. So, what exactly is an AVL tree? At its core, an AVL tree is a binary search tree with one crucial additional property, self-balancing. Before we dive deeper into the definition, let's first understand a few key concepts. The first concept is tree height. In the context of an AVL tree, the height of a tree is defined as the number of nodes on the longest path from the root node to any leaf node. For example, in a tree where the longest path from the root node 20 to the leaf node 32 passes through four nodes, so the height of the tree is four. Similarly, the left subtree height of node 20 is two, while the right subtree height is 3. For a tree with only one node, for example, node 8, the height is considered 1, because there is only one node. If a tree is empty, its height is 0. For node 8, which has no left or right children, both the left and right subtree heights are considered 0. I've marked each node's height in yellow. Feel free to pause the video and review it if needed. In general, the smaller the tree height, the more efficient the operations will be, as search, insert, and delete paths are shorter. The second concept is the balance factor. The balance factor of a node is defined as the height of its left subtree minus the height of its right subtree. In an AVL tree, the absolute value of the balance factor of every node must not exceed one. This means the valid balance factor values are minus one, zero, or one. In other words, the height difference between the left and right subtrees of any node cannot exceed one. If it does, the tree needs to be rebalanced through rotation operations. Now let's look at a specific example. In this binary search tree, I've marked each node's balance factor in green. You can clearly see that all balance factors fall within the range of minus one, zero, and one, so this tree satisfies the AVL tree's balance requirements. However, if we remove the two leftmost leaf nodes, eight and 15, the tree will still technically be a binary search tree, but it will no longer satisfy the AVL tree conditions. At this point, the height of the left subtree of the root node is one, while the height of the right subtree is three, resulting in a balance factor of minus two. Since the balance factor exceeds one, the tree becomes unbalanced and no longer meets the AVL tree's definition. The key takeaway here is that an AVL tree is not just a binary search tree it must also ensure that the balance factor of each node stays within the range of minus one, zero, and one. If this condition is violated, the tree needs to be rebalanced through rotation operations to restore balance and maintain an optimal height. We'll take a closer look at how rotations work in the next video. Because AVL trees strictly maintain balance, they are highly efficient in terms of time complexity. Whether it's searching, inserting, or deleting, AVL trees have an average time complexity of O log N, where N is the number of nodes in the tree. Some of you might be wondering, what's the difference between AVL trees and red-black trees? Both aim to prevent binary search trees from degrading into a linked list, but they differ in balancing strictness and application scenarios. An AVL tree is a strictly balanced binary search tree, which requires the height difference between the left and right subtrees of any node to be no more than one. This strict balancing helps ensure high efficiency in search operations 
as it keeps the tree height minimized. However, this balance comes with a trade-off. In situations where there are frequent insertions and deletions, the AVL tree may require more frequent rotations to maintain its balance, leading to higher overhead for adjustments. On the other hand, the red-black tree is a weakly balanced binary search tree. It doesn't enforce the strict balancing that the AVL tree does. Instead, it ensures that the longest path from the root to a leaf node is no more than twice as long as the shortest path. This more relaxed balancing reduces the number of rotations needed during insertions and deletions, making red-black trees more efficient for scenarios that involve frequent updates. In short, AVL trees are ideal for scenarios that require frequent lookups, while red-black trees perform better in situations with frequent insertions and deletions. Now, let's take a quick look at a basic Java implementation of an AVL tree. Today, we'll focus on node definition and search operations, leaving insertion and deletion for a future discussion. In the code, we define a node class with four properties, key, height, left, and right. Each node stores its height, which is initialized to one. This height is used to calculate the balance factor and helps determine whether the tree is balanced. The search method is implemented recursively. It compares the current node's value with the target value, then decides whether to search in the left or right subtree, continuing until the target value is found or not found. AVL trees are widely used in scenarios that require efficient lookups and stable performance. For instance, they are applied in memory management systems to maintain free memory intervals, enabling fast allocation and retrieval of suitable memory blocks. In some file system implementations, AVL trees help manage file metadata or indexes, boosting path lookup efficiency. In routing algorithms, AVL trees can efficiently match routing information, ensuring faster data packet delivery. They are also used in programming language libraries as underlying structures for ordered dictionaries and sets, supporting efficient insertions, deletions, and searches. In event-driven systems, AVL trees maintain task queues sorted by priority or timestamp, ensuring accurate event scheduling. Additionally, in computational geometry, AVL trees facilitate dynamic interval queries, supporting efficient updates and searches. Overall, AVL trees are ideal for scenarios that require frequent searches and a high level of balance.